Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Inside IUE Sports. I'm your host, Caleb Gillock, and joining me to talk about cross country first off in our episode today is Haley Rogers, Seth Prince, and head coach Brett Crowley. How are you guys all doing today? Great. Pretty Thank good. you. Well, I'm glad to have you on here and uh, talk a little bit about some of the previous meets that you guys have had. Uh, we'll start out by talking about Wilmington. And at Wilmington, the men's team placed 22nd, the women placed 33rd. Coach, tell us a little bit about it. Uh, really good day on a, on a course that's traditionally been uh, very favorable for the Red Wolves. Not the best of weather and not the best of footing uh, in terms of conditions. Pretty muddy and variety of spots. But uh, for our men, uh, obviously, to uh, finish uh, a 22nd out of uh, almost you know 38 teams, very very strong performance across the board. A women's team, again, defeating 10 teams, again, uh, setting school records in that aspect for uh, teams defeated in a meet. Uh, uh, again, we had some very strong individual performances, and all in all, we got out of there alive and uh, uh, almost entirely healthy. Allie, uh, unfortunately, uh, hurt her knee uh, during this event, but uh, 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 couldn't ask really for, for a better, better meet. Uh, uh, and we did well in competing against the rest of the KIC. Uh, 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 we, uh, for the men, they finished in, uh, second women in the middle of the pack amongst the, uh, the KIC teams, which was, a, which was a good performance for us at this particular event. Now Dylan Cope had the fast time for the men with 27.03, and Grace Yetton had a 20.47 for the women. Tell us a little bit about their performance as well. Uh, and Dylan has been coming on extremely strong. Again, uh, training with uh, this guy over here. Uh, uh, he's really you know, having quite a fall. Uh, he seems to be getting stronger each week from that standpoint. And, and, and really, uh, thanks to our, our team approach, uh, Dylan seems to be... Uh, 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 again, you know, connecting with his teammates like Seth and whatnot, and it has really been very helpful, I think, for him mentally and physically across the board. Grace has been very consistent, although that day she wasn't very happy with her time. Uh, felt like she could go faster. Uh, but again, uh, uh, for our, our, our students and our freshmen, especially to be at a, an event like this where there are more than 300 runners and learning how to run in a pack, uh, uh, running shoulder to shoulder, and in some cases right on, right on top of people, uh, uh, is a good experience across the board. So I think Grace did very well, even though I know that she wasn't. As she told me, I am not pleased is, is the way way she uh, ended that particular day. Now, how did the meet go for each of you? Haley, we'll start with you. Um, I ran in big meets before, especially semi-state, but this was definitely bigger than semi-state. We were literally walking at the start uh, for the first turn. And it was unbelievable to see how many people were on the sides throwing up and so many people that fell that it was it was actually a great experience to be able to do that since that's not what you see at semi-state. Right. Seth, how about you? Well, there was a lot of construction going on and they had some tarmat type mats over some of the stuff that was proved really kind of difficult and had to watch your step, but coming in fourth year or third year being, you know, it was four years being there, so I knew what to expect with the people and like trying to talk to the younger ones about the strategies they should go out as and just try and uh, focus more on our team effort and focus on each individual, just trying to plan the best strategy out and run the best we can and not worry about the construction that was going on. <laughs> Well, you guys also had a great showing at Midway. The women placed third, the men placed second. Mm -hmm. uh, Grace and Dylan both had fast times there, but tell us how the meet went at Midway. Well, I think overall, while they had fast times, well, we had probably our two best team performances where one, one through five for both the men and the women were very close together. The team gap in terms of time uh, was extremely close. That was uh, a set goal that we had back and even in August when we began our season. Uh, that we wanted our, our best five to seven runners to be within a minute or two of each other. Obviously, we're getting closer and closer uh, to having, especially our women, uh, 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 again, uh, bolstered by, uh, uh, again, our, our leaders from this standpoint, Morgan, Haley, uh, and Grace. But we had excellent performances from Kelsey Beener, a freshman who walked on our team. Uh, Teresa Hillsman has been extremely consistent across the board. Riley, Johnson, Alexis. Uh, again, this was our, our best team effort for the women across the board. The men were uh, had some bounce back efforts. Pedro Feliciano joined in the in the mix uh, this time around. And had an excellent performance. Um, uh, uh, Dylan and Seth very consistent. Adam Klipstein coming on as well. Uh, so it was a great great day for us in horse country. 
how'd it go for you guys? Seth, we'll start with you this time. It was very good. I uh, started out at a pace I wanted to keep, and by the first, second mile, I saw Dylan. He was fighting for the lead. I was coming in. I was fighting for third and fourth place. And it just once by the third and fourth mile, we were all kind of staggered out and just tried to keep pushing. <laughs> all right. Haley, how about you? Um, well, with that, I me, mean, I was having really bad knee problems. So, I mean, at that race, it was just basically I was there to finish it. At that point, it didn't matter what time. I just wanted to be able to finish with my knees. But it was an awesome experience. Uh, Morgan and I, at the beginning, decided to set a pace in the beginning just to keep that pace. And I think that the first mile we definitely did, and then it just went on after that. But it was awesome because you got to run in between horse pastures, so like the horses were running up next to you. So it was awesome. All right, when we come back from the break, we'll talk about the upcoming kayak meet for the cross country team. We'll be right back with more Inside IUE Sports. This is where a busy mom can work toward a bachelor's degree from a top national university during softball practice. It's where a service member can continue his college studies from anywhere in the world and where you'll benefit from one of the country's most effectively delivered online programs. So, if you've ever wondered if a college education is really worth it, this is where you'll see that it is. This is Indiana University East Online. And welcome back to Inside IUE Sports. Joining me from the cross country team is Haley Rogers, Seth Prince, and head coach Brett Crowley. Let's talk a little about, about the kayak matchup. The KIAC meet is coming up. Tell us a little bit about what you're expecting, coach. Well, uh, hopefully we're expecting some really fast times and, and uh, again, a great team effort from both our men's and women's squad. Uh, uh, this will be uh, the last go around for Seth and cross country along with Taylor Gray, who are uh, our only uh, seniors on, on our team at this point in time. And so uh, uh, this is their opportunity to, to shine in, in their la last year with us. Uh, 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 I've been told this will be a similar course to ours. Uh, 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 very pretty sharp downhill and then uh, uphill finish. And uh, uh, we'll be actually running in a very picturesque part of, of Pittsburgh from that standpoint. So uh, this will be a good road trip and a good experience, I think, for, for our entire team. Now, you guys have seen a lot of the kayak teams this year. What do you expect to see at the kayak meet? Haley, we'll start with you. Um, I know Asbury has been a big competition for us, so we're basically just going after Asbury. And I think, honestly, we can, as a team, if we run our hardest, I think we'll be okay. Seth, how about you? Uh, well, since Burrito's gone and Rear Grand's come in, uh, I've been looking at some of their times. They're a pretty formidable force, and we're just going to have to run our best and try and get ahead of them. And if not, we should have a couple of guys qualify individual for nationals, which is a really great thing. Is I don't think I think we've only had one individual for uh, we've never had two on the same team so that would be real impressive. Now I'm actually glad you brought that up because that was actually my next question. What does it take, Coach, to be able to qualify for the national meet? Well, uh, first of all, uh, as individuals, you have to finish in the top 15, uh, uh, and overall, uh, the winning team uh, automatically places its first seven runners into the national meet. After that. It's the next four runners uh, who have at least finished in the top 15, earn an individual berth uh, to the NAI Nationals in Lawrence, Kansas. So that's how it's scored. All right. Now, either do either of you feel like you have a chance of making it into the national meet, for Seth? Well, I always hope. Um, I know Dylan, Adam, and I. Uh, uh, it's going to take our best times, but I believe we three can make it if we outdo some of the other competition, which is pretty tough this year. Um, Last year being the number one, I was able to squeeze in with Bria, but this year it's going to be a lot hard, harder and more of a challenge, which I'm looking forward to. All right, how about you, Haley? Um, same. I think that Grace, Morgan, and I also have a chance. If we run our fastest times, I think we can make it. It'll be tough, but... Now, what are some of the... I'm sure you guys will all agree on the same teams here, but what are some of the more competitive teams that you're expecting to see at the meet? Well, unique to my experience, this being now my, my third year uh, with KIC, where we've had Berea who's been extremely strong out in front. There's a lot more parity in our conference, both on the men's and women's side. Uh, Rao Grant, I think, will be very competitive, uh, as well as Barry. Uh, Brescia is kind of an unknown. Uh, they've had quite a fall, according to their times. 
uh, uh, and along those lines, uh, uh, you can count out some of the other schools that may jump in there as well. Point Park will be the host, and obviously we'll have some local knowledge and uh, a little bit of an advantage uh, knowing the course since their campus is only less than a couple miles from where we're going to be running. Uh, and Carlo will have some local advantage too. So uh, all in all, there'll be a lot of parity and uh, it'll be a very competitive day. All right, Seth, what do you think some of the more competitive teams will be with some of the runners that you've been against this season? Well, Point Park definitely is, they have some individuals that are going to be up there in Rio Grande. Uh, they've been one of the most faster teams on us. And just, I think everyone in the conference is going to be a hard team to beat. And I'll, we're going to have to run our best to get it. All right, how about you, Haley? Um, our biggest competition is Asbury. I know at the Wilmington and Midway meet they beat us and I know that they all run at the beginning in a pack but I think there's a chance for us to get up there with them as well. All right well best of luck at the kayak meet. When we come back we'll have more Inside IU Sports. I'm Dr. Ganesh Ramachandran, the region's only hand specialist at Reed Orthopedic Center. Patients love how easy it is having everything under one roof and how easy it is to get here. Right here at Reed Orthopedic Center, right here in Richmond. Welcome back to Inside IUE Sports. I'm your host, Caleb Gillock. The women's basketball team had their very first ever game this past Saturday at Taylor University. The Red Wolves had a great crowd in attendance with nearly 500 people in attendance. However, the Red Wolves did fall 94-62 to, to Taylor University. We'll pick up the action with the first ever Red Wolf points early in the first half. <laughs> Tia King gets the first two points of the season for the Red Wolves. And that's going to be Red Wolf basketball going the other way. And uh, we'll be sure to keep that on video. Uh, we did a story a few years back, uh, uh, both when IUE started a men's club team and a varsity team. Uh, no one knows who got the first basket on either of those. Uh, even on the, the NAI level, there is a DVD of that game, but the five minutes where the first basket happens disappeared into thin air. So uh, Tia King's going to go down, the only person we're going to know for sure <laughs> that ever scored the first basket for any of our basketball teams. Campbell turns it over on a traveling violation. 6-2 lead for the Trojans with 18.05 left to go in the first half. Over on the right side is Bratton. Now out top to Richardson. Richardson passes to the free throw line to Wise. And that's going to be a point there by Wise. And right there is Campbell, and she's going to put one up. This one will not fall. And it's going to stay Red Wolf basketball as they trail 8-2. to two. Seventeen thirty-six left to go. And ball inbounded to Niehoff, and Niehoff will get two points for the Red Wolves. Nice play, nice look uh, by Bailey Dryman, and good job to make that cut and convert for Kerrigan Niehoff. 8-4 here in the first half. Out top with the ball is Wise. Ball now over on the right side. Now to Richardson. Richardson drives underneath the basket and will go for the reverse. And lay it in, 10-4. Richardson has eight points. And Tia King will get the points there for IU East. She now has four. Out top is Wise. Wise will hand it off to Bratton. And it's going to be Red Wolf basketball. Looks like the foul is going to go against Megan Richardson. Two fouls now on the Trojans. So the foul count is two to one. And the Red Wolves will be bringing the ball up the floor. Tia King bringing the ball up for IU East. Crosses the half-court line. Taylor playing a 2-3 right now. Out on the right side is Campbell. 
King will pass down low to Niehoff. She'll go behind over to Packer, and this is going to go out of bounds. Trojan basketball. Maybe one pass too many. Had a nice interior passing. Uh, got uh, Brooke Packer on the block, but one pass too many uh, got to, led to the turnover. Tia King putting on some pressure here, and she'll be tripped up by the screen. And here is going to be a shot put up. This one will be missed by Looked Like Wise. Get in there. And that one's going to be no good. Red Wolves be going to the line to shoot two. So close to the first three-point play, it's going to be the first free throws instead. And Campbell will go to the line to shoot two. Red Wolves down 10-6 to six here in the first half with 16-12 to go. Campbell up the line for the first time this season. Her first free throw is good. If you're going to take odds on who the leading scorer for this first season is going to be, uh, Mackenzie Campbell would probably be at the top of that list. Uh, had, if you go by high school honors, uh, one of the more decorated careers uh, in uh, the scrimmages we've seen. Unofficially, she's uh, been a very productive scorer. So um, get her on the scoreboard. Uh, we're going to see a lot of points from Mackenzie Campbell in the next four years. There you have it, the opening game for the women's basketball team at Taylor University. When we come back, the men's basketball team also opened up their season this past weekend. We'll take a look at what happened at Indiana Wesleyan. We'll be right back with more Inside IUE Sports. And welcome back to Inside IUE Sports. The men's basketball team also opened up their season this past weekend at Indiana Wesleyan's Caleb Demick Memorial Tournament. The men's basketball team picked up a 77-46 win over Purdue North Central and also an 89-70 win over Oklahoma Wesleyan. We'll pick up the action with the opening tip of the season. Uh, this year... We're not going to uh, be looking up to anyone. We've got enough physical talent and basketball talent to, I believe, to match up to anyone in the country. And the Red Just Wolves like get that. to start things off. That was number four, Houston Clark. And he's going to start the game off with a 2-0 lead for the Red Wolves. Have you ever seen a season for anyone start like that? No, dunk I right haven't. Off, dunk right off the tip. Welcome back, Houston, out all year last year with the ankle injury. I'd say he's ready to go. Out on top right now for the Panthers, Kiwan Ollie. And it's going to be inside and tied up. And that's going to go to the Panthers off of the alternating possession. With 19.29 left here in the first half. Oh, Kiwan Ollie inbounding the ball for the Panthers. He will inbound to number 10, Kendrick Lee. Out on top now for Purdue North Central. Over to the left wing. And shot clock violation. This one goes to the Red Wolves. And you not to put too much on the first 41 seconds of a season. We're 19-19 left in the first half. Defense a big problem last year. Start off with a forcing a shot clock violation. <laughs> you cannot start a season better than this. <laughs> All right. Looks like... Claypool will inbound for the Red Wolves. And shot goes up by Fagman, but doesn't fall, but there's Hunt to rebound. <laughs> Brad Hunt now has four points on the game as the Red Wolves lead 11-4 here in the first half with 16-14 left to go. And that's going to be rebounded underneath by Purdue North Central's number three. They've also had a lot of number changes on their roster tonight, but number three, Mile Merchant right there is Dominic Williams with an easy basket. And Red Wolves have the 13-4 lead as they have possession of the ball here out of the timeout. Here's 
Clark over to number 33. That's Parker Salinas. Even the foul column piling up in the Red Wolves' favor. favor. Only one against IU East, four for against Purdue North Central. Make it five as Vashe Davis does what he does best. So uh, Red Wolves going to be probably shooting a lot of free throws in the last ten minutes of this half. Like Kyle said, the basket looks good for Vashe Davis. And the foul was also on number 10. That was Kendrick Lee. That's his third right now, Kyle. Halfway, not even halfway through the first half. So I'm counting players on the Purdue North Central bench. I'm seeing five there, so it looks like they've got, assuming they're all available to play, substitution options. But again, some of them in t-shirts, maybe some injuries or things we're not aware of. But uh, um, yeah, three fouls in the first six minutes, not a position you want to be in at any level. And a free throw by Claypool was missed. Rebound there by Vashe Davis. Nice job by Vashe. Kind of a you broke it, you fix it deal. He was responsible for the turnover, turnover, but able to hustle back on defense, interfered with the shot, and able to get the rebound. There's Josh Price with his first basket of the season, 22-6. There you have it. The men's basketball team opens up their season 2-0 at the Indiana Wesleyan Caleb Demick Memorial Tournament. We'll be right back with more Inside IUE Sports. Dylan Newman had a terrible dislocated shoulder after a bad dirt bike accident. The long-term solution, surgery and intense rehab. I trusted Reed Orthopedics because they had already fixed my ankle. And within four months of my surgery, Dr. Miller and my Reed therapist, April, helped me to regain my motion and most of my strength. Thanks to Reed Ortho, I can get back to what I love. It's all about trust. Right, Dr. Miller? Right here at Reed. Right here in Richmond. And welcome back. Last week I had a chance to talk with volleyball head coach Abby Niekamp about how the regular season went and what she's expecting to see in the postseason. Let's take a look at what Coach Niekamp had to say. Abby, thanks for joining me today. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. Well, it's been a great season. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, uh, this season's been great for us. You know, we're so young, but we've had a lot of, of accomplishment already, so we're hoping to build on that. All right. Well, the turning point of the season, you obviously had a little bit of a tough start uh, up against some ranked teams, but the turning point of the season seemed to be around the Point Park match. Uh, tell us a little bit about why that seemed to be such a confidence booster in the second half of the season. I think it was one of the first matches that we found that our team played together as a team for the first time. Um, we put together a consistent effort the whole game through, and it was a huge win for us. So I think that's what helped kind of turn the season for us. All right, well, let's talk about some of the players and how they've improved. Let's start with um, some of the most improved front row players. Who do you think they are and why? Well, Mallory's been kind of carrying us all season, I feel like, with her offensive play. Um, but we're starting at our middles, Bailey and Morgan involved a little bit more. Um, and Katrina Detweiler has really stepped up in that right side position for us this year. So I think they've all made big improvements. Um, Morgan Dobbs, when we get her out there, she plays great for us, and she has stellar nights. So I think everybody's kind of pulling their weight this year. All right, and how about the back row as well? Well, Madison Yoder has been our great libero. Um, she's so scrappy, and she kind of goes all over the court and picks up everything for us. Uh, we have Madison Mangus back there as well, playing a middle back position that she hasn't ever played before. So when she gets some big div digs, it really um, sparks our energy on the court. All right. Well, the kayak tournament coming up soon, obviously a first round bye. But it's looking like the first team that you're going to play in the tournament is going to be IU Southeast. Tell us about what you expect to see out of them and really just out of the entire conference tournament. Well, everybody's right there at the top right now um, fighting for those those top positions in, in conference. Um, we have some great teams in our conference. I think Southeast is going to be a really tough match for us again. They beat us on, on our home court, so we're hoping to not do that again. I know the first time around we had a lot of our own errors, so we really want to eliminate those the next time around. All right. Anything else you'd like to add about this season or what's to come up? No, it's just been a great season. And I hope we can keep it going. All right, well, thanks for joining me. Keep up to date with how the volleyball team's doing throughout the conference tournament and the remainder of their season at IUEredWolves.com. We'll be right back with more Inside IUE Sports. This is where a busy mom can work toward a bachelor's degree from a top national university during softball practice. It's where a service member can continue his college studies from anywhere in the world and where you'll benefit from one of the country's most effectively delivered online programs. So, if you've ever wondered if a college education is really worth it, this is where you'll see that it is. 
This is Indiana University East Online. And welcome back to Inside IUE Sports. That sound that you just heard means that it is time for Wolf Center. Wolf Center is where we take a look back at last week's IU East results and ahead to next week's schedule. You can download the Wolf House sound that you just heard for free by downloading the free IU East Athletics app to your iPhone or Android device at the iTunes App Store or on the Google Play Store. Now let's take a look back at last week's results. On October 30th, the volleyball team defeated Cincinnati Christian 3-0. Katrina Detweiler had nine kills, two aces, and a 4-12 hitting average for the Red Wolves. On October 31st, the men's basketball team opened up their season with a win against Purdue North Central, 77-46. Houston Clark set the career rebounds record for IU East. On November 1st, the men's basketball team also beat Oklahoma Wesleyan 89-70. Brad Hunt had 15 points, six rebounds, and two blocks. Also on November 1st, the volleyball team fell to Campbellsville University 3-1. Caitlin Kelly had 35 assists, 9 digs, 6 kills, and a 500 hitting average. Also on November 1st, the women's basketball team lost to Taylor University in their opening game 94-62. Kayla Schaefer was leading scorer with 17 points, 5 rebounds, and 2 steals for the Red Wolves. Now taking a look ahead at the schedule, on November 8th, Cross Country will be at the Kayak Meet in Pittsburgh, that starts at 1.30 p.m. Also on November 8th, the men's basketball team will be at Cincinnati Christian University to take on Cincinnati Claremont. That time will be announced yet. Also on November 8th, the women's basketball team will take on the 2014 NAIA Qualifier Roosevelt at 2 p.m. On November 11th, the men's and women's basketball team will be home against Wilberforce for homecoming at the Tiernan Center. The men's team will play at 6 p.m. Women will follow at 8 p.m. And you can watch that game at IUERedwolves.com and on WETV. And also on November 14th, the volleyball team will take on IU Southeast at Point Park for the kayak quarterfinals. You can catch that game on IUERedwolves.com. That concludes this week's episode of Inside IUE Sports. I'm your host, Caleb Gillock. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>